welcome everyone. I'm Richard. Hi, I'm Vidya. We're really glad you joined us here today. We're going to have a lot of fun talking tech, and I wish you could be here with us personally, but we're alive at least, and that means we can kind of say anything. Like I could say Google should bring back Google Reader, and I, I'm still working here. So that's awesome. If you have other hot takes, you want to share some feedback, put it in the chat. We can see that stuff live right now, so keep it coming. If you can't see the live interactivity, please click on the blue Join Live Interactive Experience button on the next website, and we'll see you on the other side. For those of you just joining us from the Spotlight session, you heard about some of our new product announcements, including Anthos for VMs, Anthos Multi-Cloud API, and the Google Distributed Cloud. Yeah, awesome. In the next 15 minutes, we're actually going to show you all of these in action, which is great. So here's what we're going to do together. First, we're going to migrate something and demonstrate how to get some new value from an old system by moving VM-based applications to a newer containerized platform. And we'll start by showing you how to run a legacy app in a serverless platform. So buckle up, Vidya. Next, we'll create. We'll build a new experience for customers through our AI-powered software, and then we'll deploy with some brand new deployment tools unique to Google Cloud. Love it. Finally, we're going to be expanding our deployment targets. We're not just shipping to cloud anymore, but extending that awesome path to production to other public clouds and even closer to your customers at the edge. All right, so let's switch some things up, shall we? I now work at Symbol Shops, probably because of that Google Reader crack. So let's pretend that I am the director of IT at this company, Symbol Shops. And like many of you, our global business has been shifted because of increasing demands online. And at the same time, we have some problems. So old software was never meant for all the customer load we're putting on it now. It's holding us back. We're trying to offer mobile experiences, real-time stuff. We have to do it as quick as we can. And look, I can't rewrite everything. So how do we reduce some cost and add some capabilities to that existing software? A little easier, without much, too much effort. So I want to start with a smart migration approach. You know, I want a repeatable, efficient way to move old systems to newer stuff. Maybe even a serverless one. But Simple Shop needs help from our trusted partners at Google Cloud. Help video, you're my only hope. I got you, Richard. So our fit assessment tool, which you can see here, is initiated from the Google Cloud console. It helps us understand what can be automatically migrated and which workloads are going to be most successful in their new home. It's unique to Google Cloud and saves you time. By pointing our migrate service, at a set of over 2,000 virtual machines in our on-prem vSphere environment, we just generated a fit assessment for the workloads running in each of those VMs. And remember, these VMs could be running on-prem, in Google Cloud, in AWS, or in Azure. So now, let's take a look at the result of the assessment. See here, we have a graphical view of our most likely candidates for migration. This tool is particularly good at detecting compatibility for older Java applications like Java EE application servers. Now that we've assessed, let's migrate. Using our migrate service, I'm taking a Java app running on WebSphere in an on-prem VM and generating a container image that can run on any of our container services, all via automation. And you can see here that the classic Java app is now served up by our only pay for what you use serverless container product, Cloud Run. Wow, I love that. So this is great. I want to make sure we know what we just did there. I mean, I don't have to manage all these partially utilized virtual machines anymore because you containerized it and I've offloaded some of the operating system management. I don't have to patch OSs anymore. That's awesome. And you've actually given me access to brand new functionality and saved me money by running in a modern platform like Cloud Run. So you just took a classic Java app and ran that on a serverless platform. That's it's pretty wild stuff. If you like that, tell us in the chat that you have a need for putting some of your older systems in these newer platforms. All right, so next up, let's create some new value and get that to Google Cloud. So, Simple Shops has some problems we want to solve. We have an app that tracks some of the store performance, but it runs in VMs, and it needs some serious modernization to support all those sort of new customer experiences and can keep us competitive. So this means upgrading functionality and even changing how we could deliver it to production. So curbside pickup, super hot right now. How do I add functionality then to count how many customers did curbside pickup each day? That seems really important. Vidya, I don't know, can you help me with this one? Yes, of course, I can. 
So Richard, what does your current app consist of? Well, thank you for asking. Our current app has a MongoDB database with multiple services that track orders and pickups. We actually want to add new services and data to capture and analyze that curbside pickup info. And to make that happen, we could look at historical footage from the past day and count the pickups and do some analysis later. This looks like a great opportunity to do two things. First, we're going to add Google Cloud AI to process video footage and capture metrics. Second, we'll containerize these workloads and put them on a continuous delivery pipeline so that it's easy to keep making changes. I like that. So if you do this, then we'd actually know how many customers are doing curbside pickup, maybe even how long they were waiting. And I think you're going to fix some of my path to prod and keep it, make it easy to kind of package and keep changing this software over and over again. I love that. Yes, absolutely. Check it out. So Google Cloud Vision API can detect vehicles in this footage to determine how well curbside pickups have been going at each location. So now let's write some code and deploy the updated app to Google Cloud. Uh, this is exciting and I'm hoping all our audience is excited too. I'm using Visual Co Studio Code here, but I could easily use IntelliJ or any JetBrains IDE. And using the no-cost Cloud Code plug plugin, I can easily browse Google Cloud services, add them to my app, and then code and test this container-based app. You are the fastest coder I've ever seen. That was remarkable. So that was pretty simple too, I like that. So now that everything's working locally, how would they then deploy this to the cloud? Let me show you. First, we need to package up this app into a container. You probably want your developers spending time writing code, not Docker files, and we can help with that. I'll show you how we like to package containers and while I'm doing that audience, tell us how do you package your containers? So here is our poll and we have four options in our poll. So I'm hoping you'd actually pick it up. Awesome. So Cloud Build is a serverless build tool that many customers use for continuous integration. We also now support industry standard cloud build packs to package up our app into a container image automatically and push it to Artifact Registry. Artifact Registry stores your container images in regional repositories. And here you see that we automatically scan for vulnerabilities. That's neat. What else do we use Artifact Registry for? This is, I haven't seen as much about that. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So while we use Artifact Registry for storing Docker container images, Richard, we can also use it for storing all your language-specific artifacts in one place. Hmm. For instance, we just went GA with Java, Node.js, and Python packages using the Maven, NPM, and PyPy repository formats, respectively. That's pretty cool. So while we're waiting for the poll results, Looking at some of the chat, I saw some questions about how do we do day two management of migrated workloads. I think the migrate tooling gives you a container image that now I could download to my desktop. I can run in different places. I have different ways to run that. Some other questions about, again, thinking about how do we, uh, how do we migrate to UKE and Cloud Run. I think these tools are pretty cool that they can actually take an app and run it in either one, which is pretty great. And I think yeah. we're seeing the poll results come in. Yeah, it looks like the results are in. And um, it's amazing that a lot of folks are already automating today and they're automating via Docker build commands in the CI pipeline. That's excellent. Hmm. So now that we have a container in the registry, I think it's time to deploy it. So to deploy our app, let's use the new Google Cloud Deploy Service, a continuous delivery service for deploying containerized workloads. While the service is containerized and could run in GKE or Cloud Run, the app is fairly coupled to our MongoDB infrastructure running in Kubernetes and is part of our multi-cloud strategy. So let's target one of our GKE Autopilot clusters. GKE Autopilot is the fully managed Kubernetes service where Google Cloud provisions, scales, upgrades, and troubleshoots the cluster for me. Here we see a deployment pipeline that helps us manage release candidates and environments. Cloud Deploy helps us manage promotion and rollout across these environments. And once the app is deployed to GKE Autopilot, you can start using it from each retail store that you have. You kick this all off with a push to get, and also you manually approve a final promotion 
to production. In fact, I'm going to have someone drop the URL in the chat window now so that you can see it for yourself. It all works just like magic. That's cool. It must be true. You put the link there. That's great. So it's awesome. So from development to packaging deployment, I mean, I think personally, this is the best set of integrated tools for services and building containers that I've seen. So I think that's awesome. So we're also seeing some other folks in the chat talking about some of these components as well and what they're seeing for migrating the apps and hopefully clicking links and trying to break the app we just deployed. All right, so now that we've just taken that existing app, we added AI functionality, and we dramatically changed the knowledge that each of our stores has about the customer experience. That's pretty cool. Indeed, isn't it, Richard? What else do you want to throw my way? Yeah, I think we got some time. So we've acquired a few other retail chains who use different clouds. I mean, nobody's perfect, right? So at the same time, this app needs to run in more places so that each of those stores can analyze curbside pickup behavior, regardless of what cloud they're mm -hmm. using. So I guess, Vidya, my question for you is, how do I run this app everywhere? Yeah, that's a great question, Richard. And we do have a solution for consistency across any environment. Check out how we do it through Anthos. <laughs> With the new multi-cloud API, we can provision these clusters right from the Google Cloud CLI or console in other clouds, including AWS and Azure, where you already had some applications installed. See here that I'm using a single G Cloud command to create a GKE cluster on Azure. Here, we have deployed GKE clusters to Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. I'm managing it all from Google Cloud, and I'm even able to centrally deploy and view workloads to any of these GKE clusters. That's wild. Thanks, Vidya. So you're actually putting GKE, I think it's the best Kubernetes in the public cloud, anywhere I want it. I mean, that's, that's really powerful stuff. I love that new Azure support. And again, each store manager, whatever cloud they're using, can actually see a report at the end of the day to know how they performed on curbside pickup. That was the goal. All right, but now you're making me think that we could probably even do more, right? We could expand some of our thinking here and maybe respond to the customer demands in real time. Could we actually evolve from that after the fact analysis of parking lot footage to maybe improve the experience in real time? By that, I'm thinking of, could I run this AI model against live camera footage instead of recorded stuff and maybe be able to do something with it as it happens? But of course, as always, new, uh, new challenges mm -hmm. emerge if we think of something like this. So off the top of my head, we'd have to somehow customize this AI model, right? Because now I have to identify the number of cars in motion, how many are waiting, is the curbside lot picking up? And I'd probably want to operationalize that model and move it closer to the store because I'm processing data in real time, so latency matters. And then I want to integrate all that insight I'm getting with the existing in-store systems for the managers to use so they can move their employees around. So that's a lot of stuff. I don't know, can you help me with that? We can. So I'm calling in my colleague, Gabriele. He has been working with one of your on-prem locations, Richard, in Austin. Hmm. And he can explain how we improve your software for edge scenarios. Hi, Gabriele. Hi, Vidya, and, and hello, everyone. Uh, glad to join you, Richard. Uh, by the way, congrats on your role at Symbol. Um, <laughs> what you're asking for can be solved with a linear announced Google Distributed Cloud at the edge. As such, you mentioned, uh, it brings the best of Google Cloud to the edge. It consists of a fully managed CPU, GPU optimized platform with a common set of Google and third party applications. You build once and deploy anywhere. As an example here at some of your stores. So let's get going. Uh, we're going to add real time intelligence with AI models and process the data locally to reduce video latency. Let's get this running on the edge in each store. So we start out by first using Google Vertex AI. Uh, uh, and uh, so we train the engines and the vision AI objects recognition and classification models in the central cloud. Here, uh, we are monitoring the progress and accuracy of the model. And uh, as you can see, the train models can now be packaged into container images, right? Those container images can be ready to be deployed anywhere, including at the edge. In this case, we'll be targeting five different symbol stores. From the Google console, we can choose the Kubernetes clusters running at specific edge locations across all the symbol stores. Once we pick those clusters, we can deploy the Vision AI model we created to each edge in the store and manage those edge clusters just like any other GKE clusters. The symbol operations team has the same familiar experience 
only now Simba can also leverage the GPU optimized Google Distributed Cloud to achieve better performance at a lower latency. And as a fully managed service, Distributed Cloud comes with the same integrated Google Cloud operation and management capabilities that you're used to. Here, uh, you know, Simba can monitor the health and state of their store deployments, manage capacity and scale, all of these using the familiar Google console and backed by Google SRE practices. So as you can see uh, uh, in the video here, a real-time analysis of curbside le service level from the live footage led to real-time insights for single shops to build a better customer experience at each store. Specific for this new model at the edge is recognizing cars in motion, telling you when the curbside pickup lots are filling up, all executed in real time. So what do you think, Richard? Back to you. This is great. You're amazing, Gabriella. That's, uh, I can't believe you built all that all by yourself. So this actually gives all our store managers really new insight into the real-time customer experience, letting those stores allocate staff and people based on real-time customer demand. That's awesome. So for the audience out there, I'm actually interested, what sort of apps do you think about running at the edge? Is that a real use case you're considering? What sort of things might run there? All right, so I do love what you built for me. I don't want to be uh, you know, greedy, but I, I want a little more. This app isn't an island, right? You're doing some cool AI containerized based stuff, but there's a lot of things already at that store location, right? Our notification services, other back office, it's all in VMs. So now that we have to integrate our new AI customer service app, these VM based systems, am I signing up for completely different management experiences across containers and virtual machines or can you do something for me? Oh, absolutely not. You're, uh, we're gonna provide you the same experience uh, with the new Antos for VMs. We can actually help you bring those v virtual machines into the Antos platform and manage them the same way we manage containers. Uh, so see here um, that I've moved a set of virtual machines under Antos management, which now gives me a straightforward way to move and modernize existing apps at the edge. Wow, that's awesome. There's nothing you can't do, Gabriella. That's great. So what's powerful here is that all the Google powered fleet management in Google Cloud, other clouds at the edge is all based on Anthos with one open control plane for wherever those workloads run. This simplifies our operations a lot. Our, that open foundation makes hiring developers and operators a heck of a lot easier. All right, so last challenge for you. Symbol has this growing European presence, but some of those regional stores operate with some restrictions on data sovereignty. I don't want to sacrifice all the amazing development and management capabilities that you and Vidya have showed me today. So is this a lost cause or do you have something for me? Uh, yes, we have something for you. Uh, um, as we announced it yesterday, with the new Google Distributed Cloud hosted, um, uh, we can use a single hardware and software stack from Google Cloud, but now with local compute and a local control plane, it runs not only our container and VM workloads, but also the data and application services we care about. You could run this um, as an example with the regional hoster fully air-gapped and have local stores connect directly to that. Uh, one open modern platform from wherever you want to operate. I'm sold, you've done it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So same Anthos control plane tech, but also local services in this fully air gap setting. That's great stuff. Thanks, Gabriella. Appreciate you joining us here. And Vidya, did you like that? I did actually, and Gabriella, that was amazing. And I'm sure our audience thinks so as well. Over the last 15 minutes, we've shown you how Google Cloud offers a world-class experience for building new software, or modernizing what you have. Our solutions for container-based apps are second to none, and we're now making it possible to extend those terrific services to wherever you need us to be. All right, thank you all for joining us, Vidya, Gabriella as well. This was terrific stuff. And thank you out there for the chat and the engagement. It was awesome to see that. So now stay tuned for the live Q&A coming up next. We're gonna talk about everything from the spotlight all the way through to this demo. Get your questions in there, and we'll be answering it live. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.